So what's up, how you doing today? In this video, we're gonna take a look at Eyes of the World and how to solo over it using a little different technique than we might be used to. That is using two pentatonic scales with one extra note I like throwing in. And the idea here is that we can come up with our own ways to solo over things that work for us or just give us different sounds. It's something I like to do a lot of myself. So we're gonna break down what that is. Got a practice backing track at the end for you to try out these ideas and your own at the end, but right now let's give a listen to me playing through this with these ideas to see how it sounds. So let's get into it. But first off, just want to point out this guitar. I don't think I've used this in a video. And the reason is it's a little hard to see. The fretboard is a little busy. But this just sounded so nice on this jazzy kind of tune. I thought I'd bust it out. This is a Prestige. It's a semi-hollow guitar. The company is somewhere in British Columbia. I think maybe in Vancouver. And uh, it's all handmade guitars. Real nice. I got this at, uh, at Cost, where I was a store I used to teach at. So the, the owner was real nice and gave it to me at a half price, so I couldn't refuse the offer. And uh, I like to use it sometimes for rhythm stuff. Um, gives it a little bit more of that Bob Weir sound, but I use it for anything. I love this guitar. And uh, anyways, what's going on with this song? It's an E major, right? And one of the key things is it's major seventh sound. So when we play this one, or however we want to play it, that's that key sound. When we go to the solo section, it goes to E major 7 to B minor. So the scale would be E major overall, but then when it goes to B minor, what's in here but... Normally it would be a B to fit into the key, but they play B minor, and that gives us a D instead of a D sharp, and that's not in the key of E. So that would be like a E mixolydian sound. So some people get confused, like, oh, what do I do? Keep switching back and forth. Well, there's endless things we can do, but this is just one thing that I like to do, is just to play pentatonic, right? Just regular old E major pentatonic. And then slide it down two frets. And that gives you B minor. So at the same scale, we have the first one here. This would be our root note for E. And then we slide it down. Instead of this being the root note, that would be for D major. But the relative minor of D major is B minor. So this note right here becomes the root note even though it's the same shape. So it's easy to move that shape back and forth and just use your ears to figure out what notes you want to hit and things like that. And that's just an easy way. I like to, you know, to, go, to tackle that. You don't have to be thinking about, you know, changing the, the scale shape and changing notes within it. You just move that shape back and forth. We could do this all over the place, but to keep it simple, you can just stay right here, just back and forth with these two scale shapes that I think most of us are probably pretty familiar with. This is the most popular, you know, scale shape really on guitar. So, just move that back and forth, and I thought yeah, it's just nice to add one note in there. Just add this, that's that one note. And that makes it, that's that major seventh, so that gives us that, that sound to, that we're looking for. And then doing it in different octaves, so one note, but different octaves right here and here. And then when we do it down here, it's not quite as key, but you do this note here, and that gives you the second of B minor, but it kind of sounds more like a, a ninth. So it gives you like a B minor nine or an add second, however you want to think about it. It gives you just a jazzy sound too. And it just keeps that 
idea of moving the shapes. I'm really into that idea of taking the guitar down to shapes and moving it around and really getting familiar with it with your fingers and your ears and knowing how it sounds and utilizing the, you know, how the guitar is built. It's, it's built to have these movable shapes. It's a very visual instrument. So let's take advantage of that, you know? And then during the verse part, uh, the first solo, it's E major seven to B minor, but then the second solo, it goes B minor to A really quick. It's all in the same measure. And you may be wondering, well, how do we apply this to that? One, it doesn't matter too much because it goes so quick, but you can totally use this over the A. And when you play this note, that extra note, that becomes the third, the major third of A. So it works out perfect, you know? And then during the third solo, the long jam, it's just E major seven. So you could just stick to just, just this one, you know, with or without that note, you can throw in that A too if you want to, you know, go more with the full scale. And then sometimes it'll go to a minor thing and they did it differently depending on the night. Sometimes it'll go to G sharp minor and it actually switches to G sharp minor and scale and stuff. Another topic, but for those first two parts, this will work perfect over all of it. So let me know in the comments down below, do you have your own ideas of how to navigate a song like this or anything else? Things, little tricks that you like to do about especially particularly moving shapes around, you know? So hopefully that helps and that simplifies the song. And I want you to practice along the track, try out your own ideas, and I'll see you in the next video.